Good morning, everyone, and welcome to University Lutheran. We're glad that you could be with us on this uh, on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, one of the things that you will notice about today, so it is Pentecost Sunday, which means that it's June 5th, which means that uh, I am actually not in this place. <laughs> uh, I am, a, a, along with our team going to Kenya, I am uh, just arriving in Nairobi this morning. And uh, so this is being pre pre-recorded for all of you. Uh, you'll notice that um, uh, th this is pre-recorded, and so uh, the music is going to be sort of a greatest hits album, uh, so, sort of the the Adam Brink greatest hits uh, album that um, uh, comes together from a lot of different worship services that we've had. Uh, but all of the content in terms of the liturgy is going to be pre-recorded um, just a few days before uh, the worship service itself. And so uh, if, if you joined us in person, um, either this Sunday or next Sunday, you would find the elders here um, leading worship. But uh, in order to simplify things for them, what we're doing is we're pre-recording these worship services in order to be streamed online. So thank you for joining us. And uh, we hope that you uh, engage in this present moment because it is your present moment, even if I'm doing it uh, from the past. And so engage in this present moment as if it were uh, worship uh, for me and for you, uh, because it is. There, there's all sorts of people that are gathering around their screens this morning in order to uh, praise God and in order to uh, contemplate the rich grace that Jesus Christ has for them. As you do that, uh, we'd like to start you off with a question, and the question for this morning has to do with languages. And so the question this morning is, how many languages do you speak? We begin with the invocation. Please rise. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take some silence for reflection on God's word and what you have been saved from. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Knowing these things, be assured that if you believe in Christ, your sins have been forgiven. Amen. We continue with the entrance song. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. We continue with the hymn of glory.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the giver and giver of your spirit, as you send upon your disciples in every age the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service in your kingdom. Amen. The first reading that the sermon today is based on comes from Genesis, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come. Let us go down and confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. We continue with the psalm of the day. Today's psalm is Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like the parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Hide not your face from me lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me your will, for you are my God. Let your servant lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, Preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. And in your steadfast love, you will cut off my enemies. And you will destroy the adversaries of my soul. For I am your servant. We continue with the second reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are, these, are not all these speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear, each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, 
Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of the Lord. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. This is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and on your sons and, da and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I shall show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire, vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the gospel. We continue now with the holy gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and, he, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I, and now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the sermon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Three in One who comes in order to give us the new language of the Gospel. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jambo Habari? Como esta? Uh, ni hao. Um, and maybe there's some other ways that we can start a conversation. Jambo Habari is the one that I'm going to be using well, right about now as we enter into Kenya. It, it, there's all sorts of different ways that we can start a conversation with people. And, and maybe you know some more. Maybe you know uh, how, how to say, um, hello, how are you doing in Portuguese? Or, or maybe you know how to say it in Japanese. Or uh, maybe you, you know how to speak that in Haitian Creole. Uh, we don't know how many languages you know, or maybe you don't know any other languages. Maybe uh, you really struggle in, in a time when uh, you're set in a place where there are other languages being spoken. And uh, today's readings, a lot of them have to do with, uh, with language. They have to do with the confusion of language, even at the beginning in this reading from Genesis 11. 
this reading from Genesis 11 that shows us all of the different languages that are out there. In fact, uh, they estimate that there are about uh, 7,111 different la major language groups in the world right now. That doesn't include all of the sub-dialects of, of all of those different languages. And so there's all sorts of different ways that we get into conversations with one another and we start to talk to one another about what's on our mind. And uh, one of the things that's going to be a, a little bit interesting for our entire team is that we're going to be going to Kenya, a nation where they don't only speak uh, English, but they also speak Swahili and they, they possibly speak a few other languages. French is pretty popular. Um, so a, a lot of us Americans are going to be going into a, a country where we only speak one language, but they speak a number of different languages. And it'll be interesting to see how that works out. And we know what it's like to have that frustration uh, around language. We, we know that it can be very frustrating for us to try to get our point across. And in some ways, thinking back to the Tower of Babel is uh, something that maybe expands our imaginations out to what it would be like, possibly, if the entire world spoke one language and uh, how that would uh, really kind of bring us together, that we could fly wherever we wanted to in the world and wherever we went, we would be able to find some Buddy there that would speak our language and we wouldn't have to worry about translating things out and we wouldn't have to worry about learning new words, but we could just speak to one another. That idea is something that uh, really just starts to get our imag uh, imaginations to expand out and to think, okay, well, what is it uh, that that will be like? And in some ways, that's going, that's a picture of what the resurrection will be like. The, the resurrection, when we're set free from sin, we're going to be in a place where not only is there no sin, but there's also no divisions. There's none of these divisions of language uh, that uh, we have between us right now. And so maybe we wonder, okay, why did these uh, why did these different languages come about in the first place? Well, God gives us that answer through Holy Scripture in Genesis 11 here, and He tells us this story of the people of Babel, and the people of Babel. Well, they all gathered together, and and their idea was they were going to build this big building, this big city, and it was going to go as high as heaven, and they were going to use that. They say. In order to do two things, if you look in that Genesis reading, they say that they want to do that for two reasons. The first reason is so that they can make a name for themselves. And the second reason is so that they won't be scattered all over the earth. And so what they want to do is they want to build this city, this city where they can just uh, sort of be there together. And yet we, we kind of wonder what that would have been like had they succeeded in that. Because God seems to show that that is not something that he wants for his people. God looks down from uh, the heavens and, and looks at what they're doing. And he seems to be fairly concerned with what they're doing. It, it seems like God is concerned that what they're doing is going to actually harm them. That it, it's a sin that's going to lead to them not doing what they want. It's going to lead to a sin that's going to lead them into pain and frustration themselves. And so what God does is he, he says, well, let's go down there. And as, they, as God goes down there, he takes a look and he says, well, it looks like the only way for us to solve this problem is for us to confuse their languages. And so God confuses their languages and forces them then to go out into the rest of the world so that they can't make a name for themselves just in that one place, but they have to uh, go out and, and meet other people and, uh, and cover the earth. Well, you see, you've, you've got this uh, sort of interesting moment where uh, God is saying, no, what I want you to do is, is actually not what you want to do. And how often is that what happens in our lives? How often do we start to commit sins because what we're trying to do is we're trying to build towers of Babel ourselves. We're trying to 
build sort of little kingdoms ourselves, little places in which we feel like maybe we can be safe or maybe we can be famous or maybe we can have control or maybe we can do all number of different things that uh, we feel like we should be able to do. And yet God recognizes that when we start to build those towers of Babel ourselves, that that's not good for us, that he didn't create us to be people that are just stuck. Because you see, the, the thing about those towers that, and the thing that God recognizes about the Tower of Babel is that even though it looks so big and so expansive, is that eventually it will become prison. Eventually it will become a hindrance. Eventually it will not be something that brings about the fullness of life, but rather it will hem life in. And so what God does is he says, I don't want you to hem your life in. And so I'm going to frustrate you. I'm going to confuse your language. I'm going to force you to go out into the rest of the world. And he does that not only because it will be bad for them, but because he also has a plan. Because he has a plan that will better hit the root of the problem. You see, the root of the problem with the people at the Tower of Babel is that they want to be famous. They want to feel like they're loved. They want to feel like they're cared for. They want to feel like they're important. And they also, they, they want to feel like they're safe. So they, they want to uh, be, be famous. They, they want to kind of have the, make a name for themselves. And they also want to be safe. They don't want to be spread across the, the earth. And God says, that's, that's a good try, but I have a better way for that. And here on this Pentecost Sunday, he reveals the way that that plan unfolded. So thousands and thousands of years before Pentecost Sunday, God started to put into action the plan that he had to make us feel important, to make us feel loved, and to make us feel safe. And he said, that's not going to come by building a city, but rather that is going to come by my son dying on a cross and then raising from a tomb. And then his Holy Spirit being shared with everyone in the world. What God did on Pentecost Sunday was he took all of those different language groups all of the different people that spread across the earth. And he made them to spread across the earth in that moment of confusing their languages at the Tower of Babel. And then he said, okay, now that they're all spread across the earth, I'm going to reverse it for just a moment. I'm going to reverse it, and it's going to start a fire that happens throughout all of these different language groups. I'm going to start this fire of my Holy Spirit, this fire that will jump from language group to language group, this, this fire that will jump from uh, Jambo Habare to Como Estas to Nihau to all of the other different languages. And it's going to, instead of bringing a new language that brings us all together, it's going to bring us a new person that brings us all together. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit becomes our language as Christians. Because that Holy Spirit brings us all around the concept of this Jesus Christ, no matter what our language is. So that we can call upon his name, no matter where we come from, no matter what our ethnicity is, no matter what our race is, no matter what our language is, we can be brought together by that great fire of the Holy Spirit. And so, no matter how many languages you know, know that at the end of all days, we will be gathered together, not maybe in one language, but gathered together by one person who has given us his Holy Spirit. Amen.
We continue with the hymn of the day. Continue by confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, we ask that you would uh, consider sending us uh, your prayer requests. Uh, you can send those online if you go to universitylutheranchurch.org uh, slash connection card. Uh, there you will find an opportunity to let us know that you showed up for worship today, as well as an opportunity to let us know what we can be praying for you about. Uh, we also, uh, if you uh, desire to engage in the Christian discipline of giving tithes and offerings to Christ, through his church, we ask that you would go to universitylutheranchurch.org. Once you get to that page, once you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a button that says Give Now, and you can use that in order to embrace this discipline. We continue now with the offertory prayer. Let us pray. O most loving Father, cause us to give you thanks for all things and to fear nothing except losing you. Let us lay our cares on you knowing that you care for us. Protect us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds in this mortal life may hide 
from us the light of your immortal love shown to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the offertory. with the prayers of the church. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would hear us now as we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O ancient of days, we plead in the name of Jesus the Christ, whom you have given dominion and glory and a kingdom. As we are his kingdom, let us not be destroyed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have established the world from the very beginning, and now you have arrayed Christ in the robes of glory. Let us join the floods of all creation in celebrating him and his enthronement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Christ has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom of priests forever, grant that we may worship him, the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us watchful for the coming of Jesus and let his coming create an urgency in us for our neighbor, but not an anxiety that would question his grace for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Use this time of silence now to bring your prayers and concerns to God. Raise up pastors, church workers, and lead leaders from among our congregation for the good of your church and the proclamation of the gospel throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us unity with those who cannot be with us today, that sharing the true faith with them, we would be assured of our common salvation in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the hymn.
The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us on this uh, Pentecost Sunday. We uh, definitely appreciate your prayers for our mission team that is in Kenya, uh, really starting this morning. We have uh, just arrived in Kenya this morning, and uh, we ask that you would continue to pray for us throughout the, these coming weeks. Uh, next week, we will also be doing the same thing. There will be a pre-recorded worship service. There will also be an elders worship service here in the sanctuary in person. And uh, we ask that you would continue to pray for the, the team. Um, I will be returning back into Tallahassee on um, uh, on the 14th. Uh, from there, I'll have a couple of days and then I go to the Florida Georgia District Convention. Uh, and then I will be back for worship on the 19th in order to um, uh, in order to lead worship in person here and we will live stream again. Thank you for being with us again. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.